Hello, everybody. Hello again. This is Jun from Kyoto. Hi, nice to meet you again. Uh, in the previous session, we talked about uh, the impact, uh, the COVID 19 impact for the air programs, and we hear uh, uh, the stories or presentations from uh, organization side. But uh, this time, in this second session, we are going to ask uh, artists' voice from different places. And uh, yes, uh, probably we have a different perspective how the, the, the pandemic affects uh, for the, the personal individual artist creation. And uh, uh, so first, uh, we, it, like, we have four panelists in this session and uh, uh, we can have a brief introduction of our creation, like, uh, yes, what you are doing what, uh, normally and uh, what uh, the COVID start to affect your creations. And then after like uh, we will have probably around 60 minutes to talk about uh, individual creation and then residence program experience is very big experience for all of our artists, I think. And then some is postponed and some is canceled. So uh, probably we have a different uh, experience, we had a different experience. So maybe we can share together I mean, here and we discuss about residence program itself. So um, the first, I would like to invite uh, Eric Min Kuon Kastan from France. Uh, Eric Min Kuon Kastan is an associated artist with the Ballet National de Marseille. Eric, can you hear me? So all the panelists, please uh, turn off the mic if you finish the speech. And then please don't forget to turn on the mic mute uh, when you start to talk. Okay, so uh, since Eric has a little technical problem. Uh, so hello everybody, I can see you now. And uh, yes, nice to see you again. Uh, so I'd like to start from, uh, uh, where is, so uh, Lea Letzel, that is from Germany. Lea, hello Lea. Uh, Lea Letzel is an hello. artist and also pyrotechnician. Yes. Hello Lea. Good morning. From Good Germany. morning. I see it's very <laughs> early, early morning for you. <laughs> That's fine. Good. Nice to see you. Thank you for the nice invitation. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I don't know how to translate the pyrotechnician, actually. I don't know if we can say it. It's not. Uh, I think you can also just say fireworker. Fireworker? Um, yeah, that's In Japanese more, sense. Yeah. I think that makes makes more sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you briefly talk about your artistic uh, activities? And... Absolutely. Yes. Um, Thank you. I would like to share my screen um, with you, if that's possible. Uh, just a second. Um, here we go. Oh, sorry, I'm not finding the right button. Here we go. Yes. So cool. Sorry. Do you see it? Yep. We can see yeah. it. So yep. um yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um I'm based in Cologne in Germany and I predominantly work in performance, um, the medium of assembly and um, the live arts. And uh yeah, my work has been tremendously affected by the pandemic because um yeah, sharing space with other people to work has been become quite difficult. Um, I'm just gonna very briefly talk about um, like three, introduce three projects so you get a better understanding of where my uh, argument uh, or what I'm saying is coming from. Um, uh, the first uh, piece is a performative piece um, bringing together uh, two musicians and two dancers and we will have been um, figuring out a new way of how to understand movement and um, music in space. So the stage set is consisting of 23 electrical guitars that are not only the stage set, but also like the musical material um, played by the dancers through a spatial choreography. Um, another take on uh, space, space and how it affects 
um, a concert situation, um, like uh, concert is um, one of my main interests. How uh, how do musicians play? Is uh, um, their instruments is a very is a highly theatrical uh, act for me, um, and I'm interested in all the factors that um, determine uh, a concert situation: space, performers, um, and all different means. So here in two second manual, I'm bringing together two musicians and three skateboarders. Um, the skate park is the ideal space for performing skateboarding, um, as well as the concert hall is for performing music. And the musical material is based on the functional sounds that the skateboarders make. So I'm really interested in bringing together specialists from different fields, and we need to establish a new vocabulary in how to be able to understand and talk and communicate. Um, and as Jun already said, I'm a, a certified pyrotechnician for um, stage pyrotechnical effects. So that's like uh, smaller indoor effects and I'm interested in the sounds that these effects make when uh, being ignited so I'm here uh, playing a trio with a cellist Lucy Railton and an analog synthesizer player Florian Swisser um, in uh, Cologne's St. Peter's Church. Uh, Lucy Railton I actually met in a residency that I was able to conduct in London for one year long term um, by the Hess Culture Foundation and this uh, uh, residency has been uh, very intense for me and very beneficial for the project. I'm still in contact with Lucy and we're working still together. Um, during the pandemic, I uh, actually qualified to be like a proper fire worker because um, not being able to work indoors, I thought like I need to use the chance of um, yeah, getting more education and I'm actually now certified to do like big fireworks. Um, last autumn, I was a resident, artist in residence in Villa Kamugawa in Kyoto, and I'm still benefiting from this residency. Um, I have been researching Japanese fireworks, arts and culture, and I found an notational system called uh, Hanabifu, fi the fireworks note by Japanese uh, firework and chemist Takeo Shimitsu that he created in 1965. It's based on Western musical notation. Um, and in February 2020, I was able to be uh, an artist in residence with the Max Planck Institute for Empirical Aesthetics to work there, collaborate with the scientists on um, trying to understand this notational system better. And this residency has been highly affected by the pandemic. And um, yeah, I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit later about this. And here's just an image of the um, performance um, that took place in November this year. Um, but uh, unfortunately, under closed doors, we are in Germany under something called a light lockdown. So the German government has shut down everything that's uh, connected to, well, basically everything that's not connected to consumption. So there is no, um, it's not possible to go to museums or theaters or concert halls, but it's possible to shop. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to talk more. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Lea. Uh, yeah, the like a fourth session of the the. Mm -hmm. The first session, it was a bit like more in, from institution side, like a, it's like a house and a house. But it seems like artists, are, we are like a bees, like we are bringing something from one point to other point, like while moving and then carrying culture or some technique or ideas, projects. Or So very interesting to talk this aspect of the artists. And now we have uh, Eric, Mion, uh, Eric Min Kwon Kastan. Bonjour. Good morning. I think it's very, very early for you. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello? Yes. Bonjour. Yes, I can hear you. Great. Great. Hello. Yes. So could you um, explain, hello, <laughs> yes, about um, your activities and then uh, your general creation? Yes, hello, Shin, Shinichiro. Uh, thank you to invite me. Yes, it's very early in France, actually. Um, yes, I am choreographer and uh, visual artist based in Marseille. I am associated in different theater and art center in France. And, um, and uh, I cross Basically, I, I walk into two, two ways. I cross uh, dance and new technology. Dance uh, um, uh, technology, not like um, simply tool, but like a new structure of relation between body. I mean, like 
like exactly what happened now, how we could create new way of empathy between body and uh, to be concrete on the stage. I work with uh, drone robots. I connect people in different territory. Uh, I work with um, people in, in Gaza and he dance on the stage, but by Zoom, for example, he's, uh, he's, um, he stay in the, the place and by Zoom, he, he could see people and then by the way, for example. So I work really with a question about, uh, like I say, a technology change, uh, uh, the, we, the, the, um, we embody the other by distance, for example. Uh, that, uh, and for example, I will do a project with uh, Ikikomori uh, by distance uh, for the piece with, uh, with, uh, with Anso Futurio and other artists. That is a part of my, of my work and I could show some image after. And um, the other thing, uh, it's the uh, other um, axis of my work, it's, uh, it's uh, art uh, in socius. It's how uh, I work with uh, people, with institutions, how they're the fight of art. Um, how I connect with the other specific reality. That could be a research laboratory, laboratory, laboratory. That could be hospital, uh, medical center for disabled kids, uh, uh, association NPO so really how we, we create a link and we invite these people to really participate and involve uh, uh, the project um, I could show if we have time I could show some picture yes please so first uh, first I will share my, my screen sorry uh, up. Sounds very interesting, actually. Yes. So, for example, um, that it's a file of my project. It's a large door. It's a it's a project I create for Palais de Tokyo and Festival de Marseille in um, in eighteen. It's with a disabled kid with a trouble engine, and um, I work with the medical center for kids during two years. So it's a long shot uh, project. And after we create a, a performance in Palais de Tokyo and uh, a movie. And we really create a, a specific dance. Every kid has a specific dance and we move uh, uh, together and we create really the portrait, 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 uh, really a choreographic portrait for every kid. And um, and after we project uh, the movie. Um, and the uh, other project in this sense, actually I work in this special context is, um, it's, it's form de vie. It's, um, it's a continuity of this project with the disability. It's with uh, people losing mobility. So, and uh, I work with the, um, uh, hospital with people in losing mobility or in the situation of end of life and how by um, the dancer with the same thing we create specific dance how dancer become a kind of prosthesis body and he will um, augment the body of other and reactivate the memory of uh, of these people of, uh, of these people so for example we create the same thing, a movie and performance, and we, we like you could see in the body, the dancer uh, uh, um, support, care him to, to help, and he could like, travel and make a, a ballad in this, uh, in this uh, context of outside. And for example, this guy, it's Kamal, it's an it's a ex-boxer. So with other, he could uh, relieve reactivate the memory, the practice, uh, what he did uh, 30 years ago. But for example, he can't use the legs, so he really cares. 
is is supported by the dancer. So it's really that it's for a, a moment. Elise, he has a Parkinson in freezing. She very, move very slow, and by other, we, we we move and we become the arms, the legs, to 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 remove in the space and relieve the situation in the, in the nature. So it's really really typically the kind of project we create by long shot of two three years and immersive uh, in this in this place and we uh, and we um, we create we create a kind of chain human chain between of course uh, uh, this, uh, this this person this human but other uh, of this institution, medical staff, uh, parent, family, yeah. Um, very, yeah. uh, and uh, we become like that. Um, yes. What about uh, your hikikomori project in, 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 in Japan? Like uh, you are researching about uh, hikikomori people. Right. So yes, and it's yes. weird. We it seems like under this uh, COVID pandemic, we all are hikikomori now. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's strange, but we we with Anne Sophie, yes. the assist, we we decided to make this project uh, three years ago, yes. and um, so that, that's it's a project and is um, well the, the uh, it's 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 how how our time this project with these invisible people with this um, how we they say that sorry for our English this uh, different people it become marginal people mm -hmm. borderline people it's a mirror for us yes um, it's a mirror for us about mm -hmm. our society so for example we, we begin to create we work with the association of reinsertion mm -hmm. In, uh, in New Start Kansai, close to Kyoto, and we meet this, this, this people. And it was what we discover, and it's very strong. It's Ikikomori, it's not just people. So Ikikomori is people, he auto contain, uh, he auto quarantine mm -hmm. during, uh, in the, during long years. But it's not just a psychanalytic problem, he talk about uh, resistance. Mm. resistant yeah. about the productivist in the society, yeah. uh, the resistant about the normative way to live. And one moment, there has this kind of um, uh, shift. And yes. uh, so with these people in reassertion, we, we begin, because mm. we, we go to Villa Kujuyama just, we went to Villa Kujuyama just two, two weeks in February, yes. just before the containment, and we, mm. We we, we 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 eat with these people, and we now we have this uh, yes. com correspondence yeah. by distance, and how we could create a, um, a piece together. Yeah. It's good, interesting. In a way, artists are kind of a hikikomori that you really want to enter to your world. And yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, we will talk a um, little bit later. That's really interesting topic. And then uh, now I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Yasuno Taro, uh, who is also doing uh, music composing, but more like a, a experimental music composing called the zombie music and or different, actually he, he has different activities. Mr. Yasuno, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. My name is Taro Yasuno. Nice to meet you, everyone. I'm going to share my screen as well. Today, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Taro Yasuno. I'm a composer. I'm active as a composer. Currently, I have um, my point is in Saitama City in Japan. I call myself a composer. However, generally speaking, I'm not like, you know, typical composer. I have a somewhat more different way 
of composer. I make auto uh, playing uh, instrument uh, and I play music with that. And I try to um, compose music only such a machinery can create. At the background of the music, there are so many different things and there are links um, that are available. So I'm going to uh, show them to you in a chat screen. Today, the topic is to talk about the artist in the midst of the pandemic. I want to tell you what I plan to do before the pandemic came back about and what the reality is like. So I put that in the screen, the, the plan I used to have before the pandemic. I was, I would have had my solo exhibition in January and I participated in uh, Venezia Biennale in 2019. And I was supposed to bring that back to Japan and show it in April. I also had solo exhibition and concert planned in June. And also uh, we, I was supposed to go to Yamagata Biennale in August. However, in reality, what happened is in January, in Japan, at least the pandemics wasn't that widespread yet. So I managed to have my solo performance. And in February, I took an entrance exam for graduate school. And in April, I started my uh, PhD in graduate school. And in June, I was supposed to go to Biennale in Venezia. Uh, it was postponed from April to June. But in June, from April, May, June, there was like the a time when Japanese people weren't allowed to go out. So in June, April, May, June, I can't remember when exactly, uh, there was a Paradise Air residence in Matsudo city. There's a place in Matsudo and there were, um, I applied for the residence program there and I started my residence for two weeks in uh, starting in July in Matsudo. Matsudo is somewhere very close to where I live. I, it only takes 40 minutes by train to get there. But of course in Japan was not such a heavy lockdown, but we were uh, told not to go out. But I decided to uh, lock myself in a place that's not my own home. And in August, I started my activity in YouTube. I started as a YouTuber. And in October, I finished the exhibition. And now uh, we are doing, I'm doing YouTuber activities. And also since I'm in a PhD program, I am carrying out a lot of research projects and research. And that's how my reality looks like. Thank you very much, Yoshinakan. Yeah, but you think you really should be very well, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, adapt new situation of COVID uh, really fast, like um, amazing to enter to. So, uh, isn't it? Hi. Wonderful. <laughs> It's great. Um, yes, so maybe we can talk a little bit later again. And then uh, now I would like to introduce uh, uh, Willy Wong and uh, Floa Hoffman from Netherlands. And uh, yes, Willy Wong is more uh, anthropologic mind designer. And uh, Floa Hoffman is a filmmaker, documentary filmmaker. Uh, hello, Willy and uh, Floa, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Could we share our screen as well? Oh, yes, so we can please. Show you a little bit. Yes. All right. Yeah. So I'm Floor. Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker and designer. 
and I'm very interested in doing interviews with um, all sorts of people with different backgrounds and also different cultures. I'm Willy, I'm a designer and I am really interested in behaviors and how people in different cultural area use objects. And when we work together as a team, we like to co-create with different uh, groups, different cultural groups uh, in the theme of uh, the perception of emotions. And we also like to rethink the way of um, co-creating and uh, the residency that we did that we're going to talk about now is, a, is an example of that. So we would like to take you through it. Uh, it's an online residency that we did in Matsudo uh, in Japan. And I think co-creating is definitely a key word for us. Um, as you can see, our project the name is seen from a distance. And that's because um, in the beginning of this year, we knew that it's not possible to go to Japan in Matsudo. So we were just thinking about oh, how can we still see, how can we still um, experience the activity or people there. Um, of course, we feel really sad that we cannot go to Japan um, because we really love uh, the, tra the travel. So we trying really hard to think about with our host, Paradise Air, um, how can we really um, have an interaction with the, the people there. So under the program called Playing Together, we started to think, oh, maybe we could um, make our daily activity or our um, the activity in, in our residency a little bit game, like a, like a game. So by playing together, we could really learn something from each other. Yeah. Yeah, so we were very happy that Paradise Air gathered a group of uh, very enthusiastic participants who were willing to join us in this experiment to see how we can communicate uh, online in such a way that we actually just have fun together because this is a very difficult time for everyone. Um, so we thought that was very important. So we started with uh, giving workshops online and in the first workshop we introduced each other, um, we introduced ourselves. Uh, by the way, the whole theme of the workshops was documentary filmmaking. So we were doing all sorts of exercises to, to activate uh, a documentary filmmaker's mind. And in a sense, the participants became our eyes and our ears in Japan. And we also became eyes and ears of participants but here in the Netherlands. So we really had an exchange in that sense. And in the introduction, we gathered in Zoom and uh, we did it a bit differently because everyone showed objects that belonged to them or maybe their hands or maybe how tall they were. So we started to guess uh, each other's personalities because this guessing and this imagination is all we had because we were so far away. Definitely we know that really clearly uh, we see what we want to see. So we bring this idea further to the city. So we invited our participants to see the city. Uh, so um, we asked them to capture some faces in the city or on the street. And also later, we also asked them to capture some faces in their living space. So by comparing these two different kinds of spaces, we, um, really can, we, we can really distinguish what is the feature of Matsuto city and what is the feature of their inner world. So it's really a, a simple um, project, but I, I, we, we find a, a beauty in it. Yeah, and with faces, we don't mean real faces, but faces that we see in objects sometimes or in architecture. Mm -hmm. And this was actually a very fun workshop for us as well, because real time at the same time for half an hour, uh, participants in Japan went outdoor with their phone to capture as many faces as they could find. And we did the same in Eindhoven. And we could also see each other's uploads and comments. So we were communicating uh, through images um, yeah, and that created a kind of, uh, uh, it was really a hunt and it also was quite intimate because mm -hmm. we were actually yeah. talking about our feelings a lot, um, but not directly on the screen. So we were quite surprised by the intimacy that was built up. Sure. So the, the whole workshop was um, like a real time interact interaction. So. Um, we were also doing the photo shooting here in Eindhoven and they were doing there. So we, we could, it's, it's really like um, 
the, the space in between us is a little bit disappeared. So we could really see um, how we feel at the same time from two different sides of the world. And, um, and the, the third workshop, we analyze a little bit how um, those um, bases and we ask them to be on the street to film again. Yeah, so we used all the information that we gathered in the second workshop, because uh, we learned about how we are feeling to use that in the third workshop. And we all went outdoors to make short video clips about the city and actually the feeling of the city. <clears throat> and um, so participants made short clips that were very poetic and it was a very specific angle of the city and we were uh, very touched by it. And these were all gathered into a process video and shown in a physical exhibition in Matsudo at the Kurti Gallery. If you are curious, you can also scan the uh, QR code to have a look. Uh, and we were so happy that participants were, were really willing to, uh, to create this together with us. Exhibition was built up by Paradise Air and by uh, participants. <laughs> after, after this uh, residency, we were discussing uh, about this experience together. And we actually find um, seeing from a distance has a lot of meaning and it's really beautiful. I mean, this is something we, we, we couldn't do before pandemic, this, this kind of online residency. And I think this, the, the topic seen from distance is really powerful that um, you, you don't, it's definitely more than one and a half meter. And, but, but we, we attend, we, our, we, uh, our intention is to see some, somewhere so, so far away and uh, trying to cooperate, trying to co-create um i think this is a really powerful tool for for um, online art activity yeah we found. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we like to keep experimenting as well um yes. and we were very happy that the, our host gave us so much freedom to to do so and of course the sponsor the embassy of the kingdom of the netherlands of japan who was also super flexible uh because some things changed in the pandemic so yeah, and we are very curious to, to have a chat with you. That's, uh, yes, that's yeah. very interesting yeah. because Yasno-san participated in Paradise Air in reality and you two are online participate, participate, participants. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, that's very interesting. Maybe uh, if I can ask to uh, Leah or uh, Eric, like uh, your experience in, in Kyoto, because Lea stayed in Villa Kamogawa last year. So of course you go to resident studio for your creation, but there is something else that you can get like a local information or like a local experience, like unexpected experience. What is you, how was your, your, your stay in, in Kyoto, Lea? I mean, looking at it now, it almost feels like it was a completely different life, right? <laughs> it was one year ago, we were like meeting in small bars and right. <laughs> being many people together. <laughs> so all things that are not possible at the moment. And for me, it was a, a, a wonderful experience because I'm not, I mean, I'm not as what you would call a studio-based artist. So for me, the work really happens with uh, the interaction of people. Um, it is a social, like working in performance is a social art form, like so you're dependent on working with other people and you're depending on meeting other people and I've had the joy to meet uh, super many <laughs> interesting mm -hmm. people, like with the help of the great team at the Villa Kamogawa and then also through personal contacts um, and uh, contacts that are still valid for me today. So I met um, the organ player Jun Sagawa and we are like continuing working together. Um, I worked with the cultural um, manager Aoshima who's gonna continue working with me. So there's like this whole year 2020 has been really benefited still and I still benefit from this residency one year ago. And I feel of course what is the, um, the beauty when being able to be there um, is the, the, uh, the experience of, of being there, not, uh, like not only like the, the uh, horizon that's been open for you within your work, but also like um, 
not understanding what you're buying in the supermarket, like not knowing how to use the bus, um, asking people in the street, like smelling different smells, um, all these like small moments in between that just continuously happen and a continuous input for you and also like the important experience to yeah to uh like learning to listen like not being able to understand everything from from the beginning and if you remember from the last performance i showed there's like this small little fire bucket that i saw in kyoto everywhere outside the houses and um, that people have with filled with water and like i would have never seen this if i wouldn't have been able to be in kyoto and it's such a small detail but for me it's become such an important part of the comp composition of the space and of the piece and of course like it's also has this function of actually because I need to have like fire um, extinguisher equipment on stage when working with pyrotechnics so this is like just like such a small detail that's become so important and nice for me and of course it would have not been possible through an online residence. Interesting yes how about Eric how was your experience in Kyoto? You just stayed very yeah. short uh, you were just beginning you, you were just starting your project but it suddenly this happened and you couldn't come back to japan right yes you had to revise uh, your yes yes uh yes yes it was a very short when we came with uh, with Anne sophie but what is very strong during these two weeks because we will come back uh, in normally in july or august uh, the next July and August. What is very strong, we we connect with the Japan, not uh, in the cliche. We, we we limit by the NPO, this association with Ikikomori in uh, a Japan and other picture, uh, the Japan vulnerable, fragile uh, politics uh, and um, really. Um, very and very re, relaxed very release we we did we did a lot of uh, uh nabe kind of dinner together and very the body very release uh, very uh, friendly and sometimes very confident and what we we did with them it's a manifestation on the streets he, every year it's organized a kind of um, uh, sitting on the street, he, 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 he organized a dinner on the street and uh, kind of with a slogan uh, what uh, Ikikomori is not just uh, uh, to be Ikikomori is not just uh, to be weak, it's uh, a, a statement and so he, he writes slogan, no more walking. So he was very strong to, to say that because uh, suddenly, uh, like you know, in Japan, the, the confrontation the, the, and the street, it's a very uh, ordinary, organized choreography. So immediately there are maybe 20, 30, 50 cops, maybe a lot of cops uh, coming and try to hide this, this, uh, this sitting. So, and we was very afraid to be arrested by, by the cops <laughs> and, uh, and uh, like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of things complicated. So um, it's very interesting for me how to enter in this file to enter is um, uh, to connect is the hidden part. Yeah. of uh, of the society yes and so now we try to organize a new sitting new for the next time mm. do you, do you still have a, do you still have a contact from kyoto the artist contact yes we, with the ikikomori with we yes. is uh, of, uh, with the organizer of uh, yes. the association takashi mm -hmm. he, 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 he sometimes is, we, yeah. we try to create a, a video sending yes. your kind of exchanging video yeah. and uh, but it's very complex because yeah. you, he, he, yeah, um, the it's a, the, the relation by the, the language, uh, the body is very mm. distant. Yeah. So, and me, I work about contact dancing. So it's very complex to, to try to imagine things. But we, the, the idea now is really not 
not to uh, to build uh, to 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 continue to to nourish just the relation yeah interesting that yeah, like a physical experience one experience already has more than million information like uh, in japanese we have proverb like uh, one look is more than 100 listening like uh, yeah so uh how yeah, I would like to ask you, Mr. Uh, Yasno-san, for example, like how was your experience in Matsudo? You, it, it's not really far from your residential area, but did you Hi. find a specific uh, kind of Hi. discovery in Matsudo city from different perspective? Not living, living and being. Yes, so, Matsudo no residence itself. Mo... Residence in Matsudo itself. So during the time, the residents that didn't encourage us to go out and communicate with local people, actually. So this is why I was totally locked inside myself. Of course, I have family living, in, living apart, but maybe for the first time in maybe many years, I was alone for a few weeks. Rather than producing something, I did a lot of contemplation rather than producing any specific things. So I happened to study at doctor course or graduate school. So I could use the free time to prepare my papers for doctor's course or maybe papers for academic meeting. Of course, one day, uh, one day has 24 hours. But sometimes I was too relaxed. In other words, I had a lot of free time actually. So So like everybody, so I spend my free time by just watching YouTube, binge watching YouTube. So rather than writing papers or documents, I played with smartphones for a long time. I watched many short movies on smartphone and uh, in Japan, there in the social issue, like many people spend a lot of time uh, with smartphone. So I also had the same problem during my residency. However, I'm an artist, so I like to produce or create something. So during the residency, Although I didn't start it, started YouTube a creation, but maybe the residency inspired me to step forward. Maybe one, maybe about one year, one week after the end of residency, I started to uh, prepare or create YouTube. So, the life in residency inspired me a lot. Uh, it sounds really like Yasno-san had a meaningful uh, air residence program experience. But if you had a choice, would you, would you do your residence same again, like uh, how Yasno-san did or in the Matsudo city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, this question is very interesting because this question would never be um, there uh, before a pandemic. And I think because of pandemic, people start to think about a new way of seeing. Um, I, I was also thinking about this recently. Oh, would, would, I, would I do that? But of course, this is a, a new 
Um, well, yeah, the, the first time we have to, we have to adapt to the, the reality. So, because we couldn't go there. If we could go there, then this won't happen. So, so uh, because, and I think the, the essential part is this, is, this was an experiment. So we found the potential in this experiment and we've, we also found out that it has a, a, an advantage that you couldn't achieve before. So if we see this as an experiment, a way of adapting, um, actually the view will be much broader. For example, if maybe I can still go to Matsudo, I can, I can be anywhere, but I can do another residency online in the same space, in the same time space. So the experience is uh, uh, stackable, attachable, it just is accumulating uh, at the same time. For example, if I can do a residency in Matsudo now, I can also do another online residency to uh, my, my country, Taiwan. So uh, this, this is very interesting that this way of thinking was not there before a pandemic. Yeah, and also we found uh, benefits that it could be a, a, a mix because this also feels like a very precious buildup towards a mm. physical residency. And we could make the project also more long-term because mm. even if it was not possible to stay in Japan for uh, a year or more years, it yes. can still continue in this way and mix with other things like yeah. Willie is saying. Mm. It's very interesting. I, I started to join the residence program long time ago. And then at that time, internet was not really expanded yet. So information was not really flowing. Um, yeah. Before I started to join the residence program, I was more backpacker. So traveling in Southeast and Asian countries. You know, what I talk about Japan was all the information that the local people have. You know, like this was kind of making cliche or stereotype or like, a, I don't know, but today we had a over information. So like, a, but again, like a, as, a, as a Eric said, like a, it, when experience go far than cliche, like, a, okay, people imagine like high tech Japan, but in reality, when you come here, you can see. So I don't talk detail, but uh, yes. <laughs> it's so interesting to see reality and uh, yeah um uh, for example like a uh, uh, really you you from taiwan and are you living in netherlands now how yes. do you like what's different to travel and uh, living yeah this is very um we, we can we cannot run from the effect uh from our uh, environment the environment indeed affect us but um, a little bit like this residency, we, I also imagine a lot of things happen in Taiwan. And I think imagination is a, a traditional way of meeting online, on, online, online meeting, because you, if you create another world in your head and you thought that that's real, but it is not, it's just imagination. So, while being here in Netherlands, I still think about a lot about Taiwan and how is my family and things like that. And so, so that in a residency, I we we couldn't go to Matsudo, so we were thinking about oh how how they walk, how they feel, and we also saw some pictures that a participant took. We we start to picture um, the the image around around the the photos. Yeah, it's not real, but we're trying to be immersive in this in the situation. Uh, but I guess if we want to have a real kind of nearly real uh, uh, experience, we need to wait a little bit because uh, we still need to have uh, support from technology. So like immersive experience, I think uh, that's almost yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, I like, uh, uh, how about uh, Yasuno-san, uh, you start to make a YouTube content and what do you think about this uh, uh, social media platform? Uh, do you already have a kind of, a, before start to YouTube and in fact you start to do, uh, do you, did you change your mind or you have a discovery something like する前と後ですかね? 
そうですね、イエス。ちょっと待ってくださいね。Before and after.Okay, let me see, let me think. あ、そうですね、あの。Yes. So the contemporary, contemporary、uh, music and art are the fields that、uh, I've been working. But uh, uh, the, uh, uh, to my YouTube films,、uh, the, my old friend reacted and contacted me and gave me a comment. And they were out of the contemporary、uh, music field. So, the old friend, something、uh, like a, the friend from my、uh, elementary school age. So, they contacted me that they saw my YouTube films. So, so the,、uh, they are not the people who I tried to reach. So, They are in a different stage than the one that I try to reach. So I think I have been able to、uh, convey some messages to those people.、Uh, probably had to change a little bit the plan of your creation, like、uh, redesigned, like.、Uh, Eric was really middle of the, the research about the hikikomori, but you had to stop it. There, I was also working with the, the、uh, Max Planck and Institution, and maybe the physical creation and the online, cre online creation, if I can call, or like a、uh, networking. Is, is, is there a major difference be between these, or you had to redesign your initial plan? Or do you have any comments?、Uh, I, There. I just、yep. <laughs> yes, please. Um, well, um, so the, because I was、uh, um, artist in residence in February, March, April, and that was right when the、uh, pandemic reached Germany、oh. severely,、um, like no one really knew how to. How to handle it. Like, no one knew how to、uh, come about daily life. And there w a s like other things. There were a lot of the、uh, scientists working, you know, having like you, the private life was all of a sudden、uh, busy because there's children that need to be taken care of and all these other things that no one really talks about, like all the care work in the, in the household and the families. So people have been busy with just like trying to organize. Um, uh, reorganize life and shifting to the online realm. So it was very difficult for me to stay in touch with the scientists and keep on working, collaborating together. So I actually started reading a lot of like、um, their research. But the last conversation that I had was with a neurologist、um, called Ed Bessel. And we had an argument because in his research, he says like there's no difference, like the brain processes images the same way. If it's an image of, a, of an object or if it's the real object, like for the brain, it doesn't matter. So when he conducts his research, like he shows an image of a vase, for example, with flowers, and the brain doesn't make a difference in between like the real object and the image of the object. And I find this so almost yeah, funny <laughs> that this was the last conversation that we had, then when everything shifted to the online realm, because like I still. Like, I don't want it to be true, you know, even so, it's the science says it doesn't matter to the brain. It does matter. There is the lack of、um, the sense of space and the lack of smell. So,、um, for me, I, did, and I, did, I realized like, how much I love the liveness of the field that I'm working in and how it is important to my work and how important the people are to my work.、Um, and I felt the pressure of needing to invent a new. Genre all of a sudden.、Um, and I, I couldn't do that. Like, I decided on going back to very basic things like reading and、uh, thinking and talking on the phone and、uh, online. And then when we were able to do the performance in November, it was very, I mean, everyone knows it's difficult to plan.、Um, and then we just、uh, went over, shifted over to just test a lot. So we r e like, before working together, we do、um, PCR tests. Like, we just spend the money to do that, to be able to do that. And I feel like that's a really good 
uh, good move at the moment. And then when we could actually do the performance, like there was no audience, so we did it for camera, which was awkward. But on the other hand, I'm really thankful for like the exhibition space and then again the Max Planck Institute for being able to allowing us to do it because again like not being a studio-based artist for me that means there would be no work so I've been really happy and lucky that we could could do that and we just invent you know me like methods around like how to how to like new codes new hygiene yes. codes new standards yes. like how to be able to do that right that's interesting mm -hmm. yes Eric do you have a major change in your yeah um yes uh, i will say two, two things but basically um because like you 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 say and like you, you my, my my work is based in the experience uh it's both in the process you must leave something and not concept uh, with right thing but it's really by relation we create a, a, a project, a piece, or something. So basically, first we will postpone everything in one or two, one or one year, what two years maybe, all the project. So the, the, that's where scale time processing. So um, so, but I refer to the idea when you work with. Uh, 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 people in the outside of file of uh, of art, it's to all time be adaptive, because uh, for example, with the people in hospital, we we need all time to scale thing, pay attention, a lot of parameter, and, and um, so I really love the concept of about uh, the philosopher Isabel Stenger about the sca the scalability. You you must all time scale in different things you you project in. You you must take time to I don't know build a big pro big budget and take time to to take care about I don't know uh, during the rehearsal. Uh, 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 um, take uh, the logistic or go to 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 take a time with uh, with the uh, old boxer for example just to know if everything is good so but I, and that chance of i take time for different way of researching with uh, for example with the uh, the dance uh, the, the, the the elite the dancer she has uh, the parkinson uh, uh, Sometimes I go to, to, to her home and I dance with her in the, in the saloon. And so I dance with her, I test things. I don't go to the re rehearsal studio or things like that. I go to, to her home and I try things. And at the same time, the other, the, the, her son, the, the assistant of life. And you, and like that, you, 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 you create in, and you meet, uh, you create aesthetic fit and with other parameters like a social, affective, familial uh, input. So, um, so for me too, it's very, uh, it's very uh, not not just inclusive, but uh, uh, I have I discover new information to say simply. Yeah, that's mm. that's very interesting. Everybody has a, not only here, but like many artists, all almost everybody is uh, uh, facing on this new era, like a new pandemic moment, and then uh, just uh, dealing with the new technology and the new surroundings. And uh, I think it really depends on creation. But uh, if I ask, it, it was come on the comment. Uh, if I ask the online residence program, yes or no, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to ask all of you. Like, of course, it depends on this, your type of creation. But uh, yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. It, just it, to yeah. yes, just to finish about that. The only things I did because I work a lot with technology and uh, and online things, but on video content. But the only things I did for online is a kind of workshop of dancing. I give a cool under influence I did for the Villa Kujoyama, but uh, it's not a big project, but I really did that freely 
because it's really it's give a workshop with uh, 300 people like that by zoom like a clubbing you know we dance together techno party and I, 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 I audio guide by my voice people in the body but i really love that because in this moment to try to touch people to to be together in dancing it's impossible so uh, so sometimes i continue because i really love to receive uh, lots of nice message of people who say okay after my job I, I don't know what to do or there's yeah, this and uh, or some, sometimes say uh, uh, a very powerful story uh, um, um, uh, a, a healer uh, healer people say I, I had the covid so my body is, is broken so i really love it to redance and to to clean my my soul so so yes for me it was just that i did by online for example uh, kind of way yeah how about others do you have any comments? Um, I mean, Online. I would never say, I mean, if, I, if, if it's only in between choosing, like I would, I think always, if it's possible to go for the, for the real experience. But I, I wanted to say what Floor and Willy did. Like I find it super fascinating because it's actually using the medium, like it's, and it's a question of the medium, I think. Um, it can be really an advantage to get in touch. And it is quite, um, it's quite easy to get in touch actually together. Like I'm all curious about all of you and um, I wanna continue the conversation and I'm curious about your work. And it's such a uh, really uh, almost relaxed way of being able to connect with, with each other, like our conversation John, that we had in preparation. And I find like um, using that um, in combination to a real residency, like absolutely is a possibility now um before and of course afterwards to continue but even to think about it and beforehand i find it um a, a, a good idea but of course like if you could choose like i would always <laughs> choose like to rather go than being in front of the computer but it's um yeah yeah wow. it's it's yeah. important to think like to use it it's, i think it can be really chance and i feel like what, what Flo and Veli did like is a super good example of of the of the beauty of like how to use a medium for what it is and what it can do so yeah maybe i could uh, respond to that um because i think this is also just the start because we're only facing this situation actually relatively for a very short time so answering the question online or not is uh seems like online is a static thing but i think uh, we as humans will find new ways uh, if, if we try, because uh, also the, the merge of maybe physical and uh, online, like where we also try to really go outdoors. Um, we don't all have to end up in a long list of Zoom calls uh, for a day. Um, I think that's, I feel very excited about that actually, that uh, of course it has a lot of limitations, but there are also a lot of possibilities that we don't know about yet. Yeah, to me, it's uh, I really agree with Eric and, and adapting about adapting. Um, yeah, just I think I think every one of us uh, was just learned how to use Zoom. I think in in the beginning of this year, it was a little bit complicated, at least for me. Uh, but I still kind of adapt, and, and and now people are used to it. And I mean. This happened a lot in, in our history that we just um, something happened and then we adapt and then we found out oh there's a, actually a new world there. But uh, before before we encounter the boundary of the old world, we we just feel comfortable. But I think the but actually this is not my uh, my uh, yeah I mean there are a lot of expert and uh, technology like geek they are study a lot. Of, about this already and uh, I just think when we you and uh, Flo and I was doing that uh, doing the residency we really found a lot of um, limitation of course but we also found a lot of needs because I'm a designer I just thought I had a lot of thought about well actually we need uh, to feel the, the sense all the senses that we used to have and we also would like to know if the person is truly looking in my eye 
in my eyes. So because now you, you see the, the flux is like, uh, yeah, so we don't really know. We have to say the person's name so the person knows. But yeah, there are a lot of gaps uh, in experience. I, I really think um, one day this digital communication can be somehow in a way even better than real world communication. But it's different, it's different. It's still very beautiful to feel someone looking into the eye directly. Um, but it's true, the new world is here. And I think adapting is the, the thing artists or um, just to pr provide a new way of seeing. Yeah. yeah, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, you were talking about disability people enter to the museum with a virtual scope or I don't know, that's a really different thing, but the yeah, technology is yes, new new situation. Yes, we all start to adapt. Um, how about Yasno-san? Uh, you said that the, the YouTube activity uh, started to connect you to a uh, different, different type of audience. The digital online technology make it possible to you to uh, deliver your, your, your creation to the, your ordinary audience, but the newer audience. Do you think this kind of fact affects affect your, your creation? Or it's, you, do you feel this is a develop or do you feel this is kind of adjustment? So that's it. Well, at the moment, I can't say clearly if there was any direct changes or influences. I can't say right now yet. However, I think that that change will, you know, is due to come. I can't really tell you in concrete what kind of things came about, but I am waiting for it to come. Situation. And then uh, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you about the financial situation. For example, like many projects are canceled and postponed and uh, all, all things that you plan this year is canceled, like as the as as Yasno-san showed uh, before, after. And how do you survive or how did you survive this uh, six months or nearly, no, one year almost? Yes. And how did you manage your life Somebody. Yes, uh, uh, for me, I work as a part-time lecturer in a university. So that was, you know, not very much, but some income I was able to sustain. But other than that, I applied for funding from the government and also uh, cultural um, artist funding, it was available. So those the two funding kept me going. And, you know, when people ask me about the tuition of my graduate school, is, some people might think I must be paying the tuition. However, I, luckily, I go to um, a public university in Tokyo, Tokyo Art University, and the tuition changes according to your income. So luckily, you know, I'm fortunate. So if I make an application, I don't need to pay, you know, high tuition. So I only pay in accordance of my income. So my life was uh, bearable, it was okay, doable. So I was very fortunate that I started my graduate work at this timing. You know, uh, even if I, even though I lost some jobs or some projects, but I have something I can think of, plan in terms of maybe research. And um, there's things I have that I can do in the future. So I think I was very fortunate in this sense. 
But if if I hadn't had you know graduate school, I would be in worse situation. I had to be an artist. I had to do a part time teaching, and so maybe I was, in a way, even grateful. I can't say it was good, but I was, you know, lucky that the pandemic hit me at this moment. Think. We can't simply go back to say like before. Like it shouldn't be maybe exactly the same because we were too much like、uh, yeah. There are so many things that we can think in this time. And how about others? How have you been this、uh, COVID time? Eric, you were saying something like a financial thing or lifestyle life. Yes. So、um, uh, yes, there are two things.、Eh? But、um, first,、uh, financially, economically, in France, we privilege because we have the statue of intermittent the spectacle. We have a, a kind of、um, uh, money by the when you don't work like an artist. And that it's very. We have this unique system in the world. Maybe there are something similar in Germany, but less, with less,、um, less subside. So first we have that, and、uh, the second thing it's I, <clears throat> I for example have a lot of recreation of、uh, large dogs project with uh, uh, of my different project, and it don't stop. And、uh, with disabled kids, and in the medical center, and miraculously, he said, "No, he continue to 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 do that." So, so it's a recreation institute in different city to make a, a piece. So that create a lot of job for me, and of course for my team and for my my company. And so we we have the lucky time to. We, we privilege to really have full time working, and、um, and so, but it's very、uh, because but but I know a lot of artists around me at the Metro Spectat living by touring for、yeah. for people living by touring it's very end、yeah. and it's very terrible. The last thing I want to say about this question about、uh, technology and online things. For me, I work at a lot about that, but it's I work at about that because to work in the field or living art, it was a kind of experimental way. For example, when in theater you connected to to Gaza dancer and he's in the room. And he dance in the saloon in front of two hundred people. He, that's talk about boundary and digital boundary. But now, if all people is online and we communicate, we live by that. For me, that's not become a, a field of research, a kind of way. Basically, that's become a normative way. So,、mm. if I have less interest because if that's become normative. Uh, why? 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 Oh, we all just、yes, uh, why? I will try to recreate the sympathy of what、uh, all people live. So, you know, it's really this is really this articulation about uh, for me uh, uh, to、uh, to to to. For example, with Ikikomoto, what is interesting if、uh, the project is we try to to connect with Ikikomori in Japan. And、uh, Ikemori in the room by distance, but he on the stage there are robots, robots like、uh, robots of telepresence, and you could see the Ikemori by robots. You know, it's a kind of robot with a screen. You know, and we will、uh, well, and he could move. You know,、uh, on the stage. So for me, it's interesting because I recreate the physical presence、uh, and, and try to recreate all time. Empathy, physical contact, and etc. etc. So、um, it's what's the point about?、Uh, yeah, 
That's interesting. Um, maybe I will change the question. How about the situation in your city? Museums or galleries are open. It was uh, Lea who said like uh, the soft lockdown, like a museum kind of things are closed because yeah. uh, even we are artists and then if even we can create something, if we don't have a chance to show, like, a, okay, Yasuno-san is showing his uh, project through YouTube, but do we have all have to be a YouTuber? No, if we have a theater, museums, galleries, or concert halls, whatever, like, a, if these are not opening, how can we show the outcome? But how about the situation in, in your city? Just maybe like, a, I'm sorry, I asked many questions, but. Uh, yeah. uh, no problem. So I can just answer for Germany at the moment. So since November, we are in this lockdown light, which is like right now it's gonna be discussed to change because it doesn't really change the infection rate. Like it's been constantly uh, at the same amount and actually increasing. But what this lockdown light looks like is that the German government um, cut everything out that is connected to free time activity. And unfortunately, the German government also thinks that arts is uh, leisure. So um, they close down museums, theaters, cinemas, restaurants, and um, where you can get takeaway food, but you cannot sit there. And the only place that is open where you can actually go experience art is galleries because they said we're uh, selling art so it's consumption again <laughs> so it's small galleries that are open the only places where you can see because it's connected to to making money it's connected to shop basically so that's uh, has been a bit uh, frustrating but on the other end like, i can quickly say something to the financial question because i find it important and i find like people don't talk about it enough um and again, I mean, in Germany, we are really privileged. And then it's dependent on the different counties that we live in. And I live in Northern Westphalia. And we have been really, really lucky when it comes to artist support. So the German government released a program called um, Restart Culture, Neustart Kultur in German. Um, and that's been a lot of money. I don't recall the exact number, but you could apply for grants. And for us, it's really paradox situation because actually through the pandemic, like um, me and my team and my coworkers were financially stable and secure until next August, which is like a very strange situation for me. Like, and I knew this since last August too. Yeah, so this is a very paradox situation. Like I cannot uh, show my work, but I, I have money that I can spend on shops. Uh, so it's, it's, very, it's a bit, it's, it's awkward. Like I don't want to complain, but it's, um, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, quite, absurd and paradox things happening, but yeah, all together is, is okay. Interesting, yeah, the, the, yeah, you can't, you can't show your outcome, but you, 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 you can buy, uh, yes, many things, that's it, yeah. Um, how about uh, Netherlands? Is museums, galleries, and theater, uh, how, do you have a price to show your output, outcome? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, Netherlands, that's me, oh, sorry. Yes, uh, yes, oh. yes um, museums uh, are open, but uh, they were not all the time. Uh, there was a, well, it went up and down. Uh, sometimes they closed, sometimes they opened. Uh, I think I, I, I told you also in our previous conversation, they call it the dance with Corona. So they see when they think it's possible <laughs> and when it's not. Um, but the cultural, uh, sector is uh, is suffering a lot. At the same time, we are also very lucky. Of course, we got sponsored by the embassy for our residency, and we also were very grateful that there was uh, so much flexibility uh, in that. I also noticed that with um, other uh, documentary um, projects, it's a kind of feeling like we're in this together, and we have to make adjustments, but. Um, yeah, so it was uh, doable. And there is places to show our work, but uh, of course there are limitations to the amounts uh, of people that can come in. Um, some people also decide to show things outdoor uh, more or to meet outdoor or to take walks, uh, to, to still find ways to um, at least talk about our work uh, and to maybe show it in, in smaller groups. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, to me, um, because I used to work as a designer, and I think design world is quite used to the digital uh, wor world. So, um, usually, we, we, we accomplish our work only mainly uh, in the digital world, and maybe when our client gets the result and just uh, produce it or they print it. So I, I think I, I feel also quite kind of lucky that uh, in design industry, it was not really uh, affected. Um, but when I when I see the situation here, I can really find um, the difficulties that, for example, um, because Europe is really the center of uh, art, at least uh, a lot of people are artists here. Uh, so, yeah, for example, France, uh, I, I don't know a lot about France, but I mean, uh, because movie is very important for French people, and this is kind of their core of their culture. So they also have they put a lot of money in, in it to uh, protect it and the thing. Um, yeah, in Asia, in Taiwan, I think we don't have so much benefit from uh, this, from this part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can I add something sure. I've just been thinking about, like about this whole what is closed and what not? I mean, it's a thought experiment, but what would happen if, you know, we would close everything down except the cultural institutions because all of them have been very diligent to develop hygiene plans, like safety measurements and all these things. So we would, <laughs> we would only have culture open. I'm sure the numbers would go down because I mean, still we're talking about a horrible disease and we don't want anybody to get sick. So um, and I feel like the cultural sector, we've been very, very, um, uh, yeah, diligent in developing uh, hygiene measurements. And also like we've been really suffering from all the, the measurements that have been taken, but I feel like we have been taking them very, very seriously. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, just a proposal that's not going to be heard, but. <laughs> yes, of course, yes. Um, we are all, actually, this session was designed for 90 minutes. Um, we have uh, less than 10 minutes now. Um, I'd like to uh, give you um, the last topic. Do you think the residency will change after the pandemic? And uh, what kind of way, like, uh, I think we can't go back simply like before. Like uh, I'm living in Kyoto for three years, but uh, before pandemic, there was uh, so many tourists and then it was a uh, full, really packed. And uh, um, I could hear like, uh, it's impossible, impossible, impossible. Like uh, the human activity, mobility was really active. And then maybe if we think about uh, the, the the environmental issue, um, yeah. The do you have you 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 all uh, participated in so many different? You have really different rich experience in international society. We can't stop this uh, international network, but we have to really think. What's your like a frank vision for future? Like uh, if the residents uh, change. Which way do we really have to go? Or, yeah, do you have any comments? Um, well, for sure, I think it will be much more important. It was also mentioned yesterday that we are conscious about um, how much we travel and if it's really necessary or not, and to really weigh the value of our travel against um, the harm it uh, does to the environment. And I, I hope that maybe uh, this whole situation invites people uh, a bit more to uh, consider other options uh, when it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Hi, please. May I? So this is a bit related to my previous comment, but so actually I don't have so much experience in AIR. 
but artists joining AIR are, based on my perspective, in the field of art, sometimes music. So now, many people, many uh, many things are shifted to online. That means the disciplines, the border of disciplines have been disappeared, so to speak. I believe that there are lots of disciplines in the art, but maybe the border of discipline might be disappeared or borderless. So maybe going forward, every artist can be uh, stick to the time, whether they are composer or painter, maybe the concept or definition of art might be changed going forward. So in that sense, AIR might be a place which can create a different type of art. Maybe something that cannot be regarded as art might be regarded as art going forward. That would be interesting if that happens. you participated like a may you live in interesting world so it's really like a, when the the society is not unstable artists maybe has more like a power or like a creative energy like uh, yes it's yeah yes that's a really interesting opinion thank you very much do you do you have uh, other comments Lair or eric for the vision Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Um, about your question after um, what what I feel, what I, I accelerate for for me and for my uh, around me, it's really the, um, the the activism, the activism because um, a kind of yes, we could say a kind of crisis, and it's especially in France. The, the question about democracy. How is it? Because there's yeah, a lot of rules now and the time we all time in the emergency state. And, uh, and you know, we have a lot of question about uh, violence cops and the discrimination about the colorate people. So at the same time with the pandemic, that's creatively uh, uh, a conscience and this different uh, layer of uh, artists around around me and people and and the moment we have less activity a lot of artists around me uh, go more in the activist uh, because it's a way of to, to to give a sense of life to really give a sense of life and And um, and all people around me uh, uh, go to extension rebellion or work in the migrant squad for help people and and so and of course in my work there are all times this question about work with diff, uh, this question about work with question of ethic and ethical question all the time and and uh, but now I am very curious about how I will have uh, with all this collective cloud of thinking uh, with that will influence my grid of of analyzing the grid of uh, reading about body and uh, and of course uh, concretely uh, my my, my work so yes that i want to, yeah. to be sure in kind of new ecologic way of right. mm. very interesting yes 
Um, yes, uh, this session is designed uh, by uh, like a 90 minutes uh, symposium session. So do you have any comments on the last, like a, forgot to say, or do you want to say spe specially something? Yes, where please? I'd like to say something. Yes. Yeah, and uh, just before the pandemic started, I was working uh, for a Taiwanese digital artist, it's called Huang Xinjian, and then he, he specialized in uh, visual reality, the VR, and it was like an uh, online concert and things like this. And then uh, he, he told me something very important that he said, um, the VR, this technique is the first time in the history that people can actually be in someone's perspective. It's really literally in someone's perspective. And I think um, because you asked about the future and I thought, oh, that's very interesting that I wonder those people that who couldn't um, cross the boundary like we do, because actually we're now using computer and cross the boundary and talk with each other. But how about those people who couldn't really go go through that boundary? How, what, what, what is the life they have? And I just thought, uh, if, if I know that and I give myself a, a little bit of reflection about the, the residency that we did, well, then what is the the difference? I mean, because I I, I wasn't in Matsuto in Japan, but I, I, I imagine that I was there. Oh, we imagine that we was there. We were there. Um, but how about that with VR or any kind of uh, assisted assistive uh, technology that we could really um, be in someone's a real artist eye there locally in Matsuto. Um, and we are only capturing some things like a uh, Google uh, Street View or things like this. I mean, yeah, the, I think the future is about changing perspective in that you put your, you, you put your eye into someone else's body. I, I, at least I feel like that in this era because now we, we couldn't really see. So we imagine no matter which way, it's always a certain level of imagination. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think that's the next level of seeing being yeah. in someone's eyes. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you very much, Will. Yes. So, yeah, it seems like uh, after pandemic, we may have actually COVID, uh, after COVID-19, we don't know if we th there will be COVID-21, 22, 25, 30, we don't know. But I think seems this residence air culture like a residence program, I think I can call already like a one culture network and uh, could be maybe more like a, a fusion style, like an online and offline residence institution. Like is then probably we have to find it slowly, slowly uh, the balance between online and uh, offline gathering. And so um, I would like to finish this session and then uh, thank you very much for all panelists and uh, for viewers, um, we will have a 30 minutes break and then uh, I will come back at uh, uh, 4.30 Japanese standard time and we will finish the session three at affecting change. So uh, let's have a little break and thank you again for all panelists. I hope we thank will keep so in touch. Thank yes, thank you very thank much. You. Yes. Thanks and a lot. Luck Thank you. for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's survive. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Bye. 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 Bye.